Thank you, Chairman. Uh, members of the board, certainly a privilege to be here today to talk about uh, public safety and what we've accomplished in the last year. And uh, like Sheriff Crown, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for your support. Um, initiatives that we've taken in uh, the last few years, like dispatch and uh, county EMS, is making a, a huge impression on uh, public safety in Union County. Um, not only on a daily basis, but almost a hourly basis. So I thank you for your support. Uh, it's just our uh, mission statement, and like the Sheriff's Department, we, uh, we do a wide variety of work, and uh, we do focus on the uh, efficiencies uh, of the department, as you'll see in my budget. Um, Uh, the director's budget um, doesn't have much change from uh, last year. Um, includes a 2% pay raise for uh, people in that unit, and that's uh, only three people are in the, my director's budget. Uh, weights and measures uh, got a slight increase in uh, salaries. That was due to uh, salary adjustments uh, within the unit for uh, additional responsibilities. Uh, but they have um, used uh, their overtime, as you can see, very sparingly from last year. Uh, but what that does is it gives us the ability to respond to uh, unforeseen circumstances. Uh, you might have seen in the paper uh, just this week, you know, there was an incident in North Jersey where Water went into the gas tanks, and several consumers uh, had damage to their cars. And weights and measures came out for that a couple of years ago. We had a gas station that uh, accidentally got a delivery of aviation fuel, uh, and aviation fuel went into cars, and our uh, weights and measures people had to go out and investigate that. So, uh, just having that over time item gives us a little leeway to respond to unforeseen circumstances. Director, I'm sorry, just the Quickly, in terms of that increase, I mean, are we, is there just an over, I mean, proportionally, that's a, a fairly substantial request. Is that for a new person in general, or is there another source of funding, or is that all general fund appropriations? Uh, that was that was for pay raises, for uh, the 2% pay raises for employees in that unit. Additionally, we had one employee that was grant funded, that, uh, that grant stream ended, and okay. we're requesting that. That, what grant was that? That was pure grouping. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. And if I may, uh, Chairman, there will be a number of <coughs> examples of that in other departments uh, relative to the loss of pure grouping funding, but there will be uh, requests made. Fair enough. Uh, you can proceed, Director. Thank you. Okay. Um, the division uh, visits uh, just about every supermarket and store that uses a uh, scale. And uh, these inspections were about the same numbers that we saw last year. Uh, revenues are slightly down over last year, and I think that's because our focus on enforcement. Uh, these supermarkets and uh, other stores that uh, we inspect now know that we're out there and we're enforcing these uh, laws and we're issuing fines, and they're more active in compliance. Uh, two of our employees there are totally paid out of the trust fund. Um, and that's the Weights and Measures Trust Fund, which uh, is funded by uh, violations that are received by that office. Salaries are going up uh, mainly because of uh, the loss of the peer grouping uh, and pay raises. Will they have extra responsibilities? Uh, we do try and focus on enforcement, and uh, I speak to the director on a regular basis. 
uh, not only uh, supermarkets, but we're also going uh, you know, to department, department stores uh, that use scatters uh, because those uh, establishments uh, continue to have a problem regulating, you know, that the price indicated rings up on the register. So expanding upon location currently. Yes. Do we get any kind of state aid on that function? Uh, because I, I do know, you know, just, just from the consumer affairs side, I know, you know there was discussion when we went through the layoffs a number of years ago about eliminating uh, the consumer affairs division. Um, but I mean, do we get any sort of state reimbursement, or is there any sort of grant stream available to subsidize those functions? Every scale that's used in commerce has to be registered with the state, and there's a fee for that. Uh, we get half of that fee, uh, which equates to about $60,000 a year. So the county, to measure. So counties are statutorily required because the, as a recipient of that fee? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. You can proceed directly. The uh, medical examiner's office. Uh, well, what I wanted to do, if somebody can explain about the issue with peer grouping, since we're going to hear it all over tonight. So, because technically, if peer grouping pays for a service that's being provided by a department, if, I hope that if the fact is that the funding's no longer there, we're no longer going to do, you know, doing that work on behalf of whoever is, is going to benefit by that, uh, that, uh, the, that contribution in terms of peer grouping. Thank you, Freeholder. Uh, Director Taylor, do you want to give an, measure an explanation regarding peer grouping? Sure. Um, as a result of the closure of Ronald's Hospital, we no longer receive peer grouping funding. And that was anticipated as part of what cost savings as well as cost uh, benefit would be sold the hospital. There were a few staff members still on peer grouping. Last year, we phased out 50% of their salaries onto the current fund, and this year, we're just raising the remainder of those funds. It's important to note that while that was a funding source, it was not necessarily geared towards um, functions that can just go away because the funding is going well away. These functions are specific to the departments and the divisions that those staff members are assigned to. And of course, how many, how many employees are we talking about? At this point in time, I don't have the official count of those that are on peer grouping. Uh, for the remainder of tonight, there is only one out of Dr. Moran's office, and the remainder, I think there was only one in economic development as well. But other than that, we're within the division, the Department of Human Services. Sir. All right, can you do us a favor? Please do me a favor, and if you can give me a list of all those individuals who, or positions that are covered under peer grouping, you will give us. Uh, to your picture as to why, if the peer grouping funding left, why doesn't the, uh, that have an impact overall on the individuals who are covered by those particular funds? We, we closed Reynolds, we laid off X number of employees. Uh, and we, we should really be looking at that a little closer. That's a suggestion. Thank you. Thank you for your shot, and that would be great if we could get a you know, a list of all the positions that are affected by that. Thank you. Director Moran. Uh, this is a proposed budget for the uh, medical examiner's office and includes a 2% uh, pay raise for uh, employees within that unit. Uh, the uh, Dr. Shake did an uh, outstanding job with uh, focusing on uh, keeping his overtime rate down. Uh, we were uh, under budget in, in that respect. Um, the seasonal, which we use to supplement our um, investigators uh, that are on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, he, he utilized seasonal employees to keep over time right. That's why that, uh, the seasonal number is uh, higher for this year. Um, and his uh, expenses, uh, Dr. Shake also did a very, uh, very good job uh, keeping with it. It's an O&E budget. Uh, we are looking at other things uh, to increase efficiencies within that department that includes um, what we send out for uh, outside labs and, uh, and uh, maybe holding those specimens uh, until uh, it's determined if we need to send that out. 
Um, was there an increase, I mean, was there a, an increased volume of, I guess, homicides that required that additional bodies be brought in to investigate or the seasonals would be brought in to investigate? No, I mean, the, the call volume in uh, the medical examiner's office has been pretty consistent uh, for the last few years. So, um, uh, it, it, it's, it just seems to be, especially since it was, uh, you know, initially a $12,000 line item to triple. Um, you know, is, has that been the trend with that particular line item over the last few years? Or is there some other explanation for such a big jump? Uh, no, I think he's, he's opting to use the seasonal budget instead of his overtime budget. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have part-time uh, or seasonal investigators uh, that he's calling on uh, to reduce his overtime and the need for overtime. Uh, we did have one investigator that was out for uh, several weeks uh, for surgery. And it's a very small office. So uh, when one person is out, it really affects the operation of the department. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, Director Moran, is the uh, forensic lab and all its expenses included in, in the medical examiner's budget, or is that something separate? No, the lab is under the prosecutor's office and it is under their budget. Thank you. Proceed, sir. <coughs> okay, our medical examiner's office did have a busy year this year. Um, they instituted a um, a new case management system um, that is going to uh, increase efficiency within the department and get process death certificates uh, quicker for grieving families. Um, the office uh, also investigated 940 deaths. Uh, the court performed 178 autopsies and 68 external examinations where um, there was um, suspicious deaths that warranted uh, an investigation from the MU's office, uh, but did not warrant a, uh, in the end, warrant an autopsy. And they completed their uh, mass fat uh, fatality plan uh, in association with the regional office. just some uh, initiatives of the office. I'll just uh, point out one of the things that uh, is included in, their, in his operating budget is uh, $4,000. Uh, so we can send investigators uh, to a uh, certification course, uh, medical legal death investigation, and uh, have them certified in that. There's uh, uh, only one course that uh, Dr. Shake wanted them sent it to him. It's out of state, so we're requesting extra funding for that. In emergency management, we're requesting um, one additional uh, position for a, dep a deputy coordinator. Uh, and it's <coughs> reflected in the uh, budget request there. And there's uh, two reasons uh, for this. One is the uh, FEMA reimbursement for past storms. Uh, we have currently uh, four disasters that we're working on, three are uh, open, um, and this is a significant amount of money for the county. Uh, and emergency management has been leading that to um, rectify the, not only the FEMA reimbursement, but we have to rectify the insurance uh, reimbursement for the, for the county first. Um, and it's in the tune of $2.9 million that's on the table that emergency management has been working to get the category first for. Um, so we have people that are dedicated for that and are coordinating with other departments, uh, but it is a monumental task. The, uh, the second uh, reason for that additional position uh, would be increased workload uh, that has been put on our office by the state um, there are um, a number of responsibilities that were uh, originally state responsibilities that our office has now 
conducting. It includes uh, care facility uh, emergency operation plan review, um, and that's facilities. There's 27 of them in Union County, uh, and they had to, in the past, submit their plans to our emergency, um, to our OEM. Um, but that was it. We just had to acknowledge receipt. Now we have to go through a 10-page checklist and check their plans and make sure that they adhere to the state standard. Uh, 2014 accomplishments. Uh, the Union County Fire Academy has uh, expanded its operation there. We had one class for uh, recruits, based, uh, firefighter one and firefighter two, but we've also had uh, in-service training for continuing education training for fire departments across the county, and uh, that's nearly doubled since the 2013 usage. Uh, one other major accomplishment for emergency management is transition of all our uh, public safety agencies, police, prosecutor's office, and sheriff's department to our new uh, piece of radio system, which is a great improvement over our old radio system, which did not cover every aspect of the county. Uh, this is also available to municipalities. City of Elizabeth has come on board with their fire and EMS uh, just recently, and we have a, quite a number of municipalities that are looking to come on its system. seasonal increase for uh, firefighters uh, or fire instructors so we can take training out to those fire departments to reduce their overtime and increase their training opportunities because we just don't have enough uh, time in the day to um, respond to all the requests for training that we have. Uh, we have been working with uh, Elizabeth Town Gas. Um, unfortunately, they um, <coughs> haven't given us a definitive time frame on uh, the, the portion of the property that they're looking to donate to the county. Um, it's about, the total property is about five and a half acres, uh, which would make for a very nice facility, like you said, for the older. The uh, existing fire academy uh, is very small. They're very limited on what they can do down there. 
Um, and when you compare it to you know, having a law enforcement background, the training facilities that are available for law enforcement, um, compared to the fire service, there is a, a big disparity there. Um, and they are in need of a, a new facility. Um, and as soon as we get a timeline um, and, and a, 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 the exact uh, plot of land that uh, Elizabeth is, uh, Elizabeth Town is uh, willing to donate, or you know, at least for a dollar for, to the county, uh, we will move as quickly as possible. Because there is a great need for it. Okay. All right, thank you. Fairly Granados. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, first question is in reference to deputy coordinator, give a rough salary, what you're looking at, because I see it's about a $100,000, a little over, salary increase. Uh, it's about $65,000, um, and it, a portion of that is 2% uh, raises for uh, existing employees, uh, and the uh, increase for uh, The seasonal was uh, twenty thousand. Last well, my next question was a reference to seasonal. If we're bringing another individual on to kind of help out, is there a need to go up when it comes to seasonal? When I see the two thousand fourteen paid out roughly eighty five thousand five hundred, is there a need to go up to one twenty? The seasonal budget is uh, almost exclusively used to hire Union County firefighters as a fire instructors for our academy for training for for training. Um, and the reason why we didn't spend our full allotment last year is because uh, we didn't have enough people uh, to have two full classes. Um, and economically, it wasn't prudent, in, in my opinion, that, to have a class for five students uh, in Union County. So, uh, but that's unusual. Uh, we usually have two classes every year, uh, and the uh, interest within fire departments to send people there are great. I definitely want to acknowledge too, your office has definitely been working proactively in working with local municipalities and making sure everybody has proper training and proper services from the county. So it's definitely a great job, a great job to you and your staff on that. Well, thank you. And with respect to training, one of the uh, initiatives that we're, uh, we're very excited about is uh, we want to take uh, first responder training and specifically uh, CPR uh, to the public and offer that at our Westfield location and all public CPR classes uh, instructed by our EMTs. So we're very excited about that opportunity. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Realtor. Um, I did have want to circle back to the proposal for emergency management. I see in addition to an increase in the salary line item and the seasonal item that there, there's a significant increase in the OA. Um, can you give a justification for that? Certainly. Uh, there's several reasons for, we're requesting uh, more funds for our operating budget there. Um, the first is uh, the radio system that we went live with this year requires us to uh, pay the state because it's the state infrastructure that's supporting it, uh, the $6 per radio. Um, and that's, that's a fee that we didn't have last year. Um, what's, the, what's the total number on that? Um, it's about $30,000 a year, um, which is significantly less than what we, we would be paying um, the maintenance on a radio system, which um, we stopped paying maintenance on a radio system last year because we knew that we were going to the state system. Um, but. That was estimated to be over hundred thousand dollars alone just for that maintenance. So, um, so we have a maintenance for a radio system. We have uh, additional uh, eight hundred megahertz licensing uh, that we want to. Uh, we have to relicense with the FCC uh, to locate them at a uh, state radio site in Wachon to just improve coverage to the western portion of the county. Um, is that an annual charge? or is that No, that's just a one-time fee. We have an outside consultant work with the FCC to process those. Uh, but what's the cost on that? That's about 16000 Okay. And, and this company does farm. F radio licenses have to be renewed every every few years, and we have the same company, VCOM, um, do that work for us. 
So, but this this licensing fee would be a one-time fee for these specific channels to be used at that specific location. Um, and we have uh, part of our radio project is we have we have really two radio systems. We have a uh, a trunked 7800 um, radio system that is used by um, all our public safety agencies in Union County, and that's the one that we're offering out to municipalities. But we also have conventional channels uh, that support DPW, human services, uh, paratransit uh, that we need uh, licensed, um, and we need uh, a maintenance contract for for that equipment. And that's something that we didn't pay last year, and that's that's about thirty thousand dollars. And that would that would come up with, with the additional how we fund it. A little short. I mean, it's like seventy-six thousand. <laughs> Is there anything else in there? Or? You got thirty on the radio, thirty on the on the license, six thirty on the uh, the thirty, thirty-five, and uh, sixteen. Sure. Based upon some of the budget discussions that we've had, a lot of the there was roughly an increase for supplies for the ambulance services as well. Is that happening? Oh, oh that, I'm sorry, that's covered on our EMS budget, but the chairman, you too. Uh, <laughs> you you are correct. Uh, one of the problems, and it slipped my mind uh, there, was that we have a lot of uh, domestic preparedness equipment and homeland security equipment. Uh, that we just can't fit inside. Um, that we is stored up at the quarry um, and the uh, on the roof of the Froelich building, uh, or not the Froelich building, but the vehicle storage building next door, uh, which that building is busting at the seams with uh, with equipment. Uh, so I was requesting uh, an additional twenty thousand uh, dollars so we could look at leasing. Uh, some type of storage facility so we can put some of this uh, equipment that is temperature sensitive and should be in a controlled environment um, into a secure area. But uh, we're still looking at different sites for that. And have we been also looking just in terms of the overall equipment, are we looking at ways to um, go through our inventory and make sure that we are decommissioning obsolete items or, or you know equipment that we may no longer want to utilize and we are, and uh, just as recent as uh, last week, I spoke to our health officer uh, about going through a lot of the uh, preparedness equipment and uh, sheltering uh, equipment trailers that we have to uh, do an up-to-date inventory and uh, get rid of some person personal protective equipment that may have been expired and will need to replace. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, I, I love to hear, especially, with, you know, last year we had the story about the Seaside Fire and talking about, um, you know, the Neptune system being put into action, and that was through UASI that that was obtained. And when we hear stories about equipment like that, it's great because the residents see that those dollars are being funded, but, you know, sometimes there, there's a temptation with to bring equipment in, and that in the long run they may necessarily not have the use or the, uh, you know, it becomes burdensome to maintain. So. Mm -hmm. We hope you're, you know, we understand the, you know, we, we, we have a lot of things going on and that's good, but we also want to make sure we're not uh, stockpiling. And, and, and my directors know when they uh, come, come to me with, with an opportunity for a piece of equipment uh, or uh, a vehicle, my first question is where we're going to put it and do we really need it? Uh, because we do have a, a lot of equipment in uh, Westfield, but it becomes troublesome when uh, especially with the past two winters we've had, uh, to store things outside in trailers that you may not be able to access to, uh, that were still plowed in or not in immediately accessible. Thank you, Director. Proceed. Um, like I said earlier, our emergency uh, medical service uh, continues um, to increase its call volume um, and its uh, revenue stream. Uh, we started out the year uh, averaging just about eight calls a day. 
uh, we ended up the year uh, with 16 calls a day. Um, the, the need is you know, very apparent, um, and I still think that uh, there are voids to be filled uh, as far as providing the investment and assuring to uh, our county residents that when they call 911 for an ambulance, that one is going to be immediately available. Um, I think there, there's an uh, opportunity for us to uh, expand this service, um, and this budget reflects that. Uh, one of the things that, uh, and this budget also asks for uh, three additional EMTs, uh, which will be answering calls, and one uh, full-time supervisor. Um, I really can't emphasize enough the, the need for a supervising EMT. Um, like I said earlier, this um, our EMS uh, is taking 16 calls a day on average. That's 16 medical charts that are being filled out that need to be uh, reviewed for quality assurance um, and assure that uh, our EMTs are providing proper care. Um, the, it's about 150 uh, shifts a month that need to be scheduled uh, for, and that takes, it takes a lot of time. Um, you know, the training uh, for EMTs and a continuing education that we really need to provide need to be coordinated, and it should be coordinated by an EMS supervisor. Um, and, and this person would always also conduct staff meetings on a regular basis and uh, assure that uh, they're receiving all the training and certifications that are necessary for the job. Uh, the budget also um, calls for an increase in uh, overtime, uh, and that's just needed for uh, late calls. We certainly um, don't have a lot of control of that. If we take a patient to JFK and they're on their way back at the end of their shift and another call comes in, we want the ability to be able to answer that call. Uh, some of the increase in uh, operating expenses really has to do with um, the increase in revenue. We pay our billing company about five.